All right, Mike Ritzema here back after a technical difficulty where we overwhelmed teams with three events, a live event, a Teams event, and a phone call. Uh, but again, talking about Microsoft Teams tips and tricks along with the uh, Microsoft phone calling plan that's been announced. And again, Cohen's Barnes could not make it today. The mayor of DeKalb, Illinois, a good friend of mine, uh, is in Springfield, Illinois, the capital with the governor he made that a priority over this event and we will bring them back and you will be invited to that event just to reprise that you know technology for all the wonderful stuff and we are geeks here and i love technology but what are we trying to accomplish with it and what we're trying to accomplish what do executives owners want is four things that's can i be more productive more efficient can i be more profitable, more sustainable. Innovation, can I be different than the other organizations? And can I manage risk or vulnerability more effectively? That's the, the four things in business in general that owners and executives are looking for. So then I like to say that Office 365, Microsoft Office 365 is a suite of products I call Teams, the graphical user interface, the GUI, to all of Office 365, and because you can do 90% right through Teams. Uh, but certainly we're talking about a system, a platform, an ecosystem. So let's talk about Microsoft Teams phone with calling plan, which I love, but it's been kind of expensive. And generally when you get into the APA 8s of the world, the cloud phone systems, they can be kind of expensive. But Microsoft is saying, we want this market, and they lowered the price for SMB to $15 a user per month. That is reasonable. You can transfer calls. You can do multi-level auto attendance. We do here at i3 Business Solutions. You have call queues, transfer, conference calling, all of it. It comes with a domestic calling plan of 3,000 minutes that includes Canada and the US. If you're calling Mexico or overseas, uh, you're going to buy a communication wallet of additional credits or minutes. You can call from anywhere, your mobile device, answer calls, and so on. I do it all the time. It does require a Microsoft 365 subscription. And again, we use it at i3. We have a lot of clients using Microsoft uh, phone, voice over IP, and it works great. So let's move right along into the tips and tricks. Uh, although I'm, I have to back up the truck and say uh, tip number one. What is tip number one? And I want to get straight into that. And because I say with phone, what do we do for all the wonderful features over the years? And you should buy this phone system or that phone system because it's so great. Uh, the answer is what do we do with phones? And the answer is voicemail and make phone calls. So with Microsoft Teams uh, phone, the voicemails show up in your email and, it, and it's transcribed and oftentimes I scan it, delete it. Sometimes I click on the audio file and listen to it, but the voicemail showing up in your email, that's where you get it. <clears throat> so trick number one is, tip number one is the slash command. I love the slash command. So if you go into the search toolbar in Teams and you click on the search uh, toolbar with the slash command, you get all these options. There's only two of them that I use, and the one is uh, slash call. So I hit slash call and I pick my, I can call an individual or I can copy paste, put a phone number in there. This is where I got in trouble the last time. I had actually hit dial and it overwhelmed teams, which said, uh, my goodness, you've got a live meeting going on. You're trying to make a phone call. You've got chat going on. Well, we're in trouble here. So I'm not going to make that phone call, but it pulls up the phone call dialog box and uh, away you go. So the slash command. There's another slash command that is kind of interesting, and I checked it this morning, and that's what's new. And it shows the last couple, well, it shows the history of Teams and what they've added to it, and essentially in the help dialog box. But you can see the things they've added, pin a message in chat, turn off or mirror my video, 
uh, which sometimes it's like my logo is backwards or my background is backwards. What do I do? Well, you can mirror your video. So those are some of the things that we can do in um, Teams. So the phone call is very powerful. I love it. I recommend it. If you're looking at a new phone system, consider that. So let's go through the list of improvements in Teams or my tips and tricks. And the first is mark as unread. So to me, one of the biggest challenges of business is to figure out all my to do's. I've got maybe in life, but I've got personal email. I've got personal chats. I've got people texting me things and asking for stuff. I've got emails coming in. I've got a calendar and now I've got instant messaging coming in. How do I keep track of those to do's and marking on red is the first one. So Anna hits me here and says, hey, Mike, I need an answer on something. And what I can do is come and, and click on the ellipse and mark as unread. And now I can see that, uh, oh yeah, I have to get back to Anna about this. So mark as unread is one of them. But another way to do that is, and I'll mark this as read, because this is an important dialogue and I wanna keep track of it. So I'm gonna move that up to, I'm gonna pin it and it essentially puts it up top. Now I have used pinning and I ended up with two or three or four items pinned up there, and then there are two or three or four items pinned up there. But that is a way that I can move things to the top and say, I have to, I have to get, get in there. So uh, pinning and unpinning is a way to manage to-dos also. <clears throat> now when we create a chat, we can name a chat, and here I've got a, marketing team chat and uh, because I've already named this chat. But essentially, if you've got two or three or five people in a chat and you wanna keep it uh, moving forward, then you can hit the edit box and you can name the chat. So that's another way that, uh, and then if you wanna create a chat, you start typing marketing and up comes the marketing team. So different ways, uh, to more effectively utilize Teams and chat. What's the next one? Well, the Compose box. So when I create a new message, 90% of the time, I am gonna use the Compose pot box, and that gives me the potential for formatting. It allows me to put a header on the chat. And so this is the new chat and I'm gonna come in here. I am bullet guy, so I'm gonna put the bullets in here. And now what I can do is come to this chat, I'm gonna bold it and I'm gonna make it uh, large letters. And now I'm creating a chat about a client, a vendor, a situation, and we can all dialogue into this chat. I can invite multiple people to it, et cetera. So that compose dialogue box, is a, a for what I for what I do. You know, you can add the emojis, you can add a GIF, you can add uh, the stickers, and have some fun with it too. But certainly, another method that I use often is the at mention, right? Because I create a chat, I've got three or four or five people involved in it, but I've got a specific action item for Anna. So I create that chat. I do an app mention and I ask specifically for what I want. Now the others, I just want to keep informed. I want them to be aware of it, but specifically, hey Anna, I'd like you to get back with me about this. And then I'll add that uh, sharing a document link. A link is what you see here. And we really recommend at i3 Business Solutions that we're not emailing or sharing documents anymore whole documents, whole Word, Excel documents. We're sharing a link. And in this case, Anna shared a SharePoint document library link. And so we're not uh, sharing physical documents. And now we've got three, four, five versions of the document out there. Or if you email a document to 45 people, there's 45 copies of the document out there. We wanna share a link. If you'd like, like more information on how to share a link, 
uh, contact us about that and we can do a specific orientation for your company or organization about that. I want to come in and create a new uh, a new meeting and show you how we create a new meeting. So with teams with uh, yeah, with teams, here's how we create a new meeting. So we've got the new meeting here. And we invite individuals and I invite the whole company. But we create a Teams meeting by going to the uh, to the uh, toolbar up here and create a Teams meeting. Now I've got my Teams meeting with the dial in number and I've got meeting options that I can set up. But we're, we really recommend using a centralized note repository like uh, OneNote. And so. I'm going to create notes in OneNote for this meeting. And so I can take my own notes about this meeting, but if it's a weekly or a monthly meeting, I want to share the notes with everybody in the meeting and I create a link. Now, if it's a sales huddle meeting, then I can select the shit sales huddle or the specific finance uh, service, et cetera, and put the notes right into that area. So now what I've done is I've got a common note repository for my weekly or monthly meetings and I've got a Teams meeting. I can go to the recurrence if necessary, create the recurring meeting and everything is centralized and organized in my platform, Microsoft Office 365. So those, those would be the top tools or tips or tricks that I went through. I wanna go through a couple more though. And <clears throat> sharing a link is what we talked about here that you can share an Excel, Word, or PowerPoint link rather than the actual file. Again, this is a governance area, but we want to move the organization towards sharing links, not whole physical files. So let's talk about Teams for a minute. And I will say that I do live in chat. Sometimes I think that Microsoft should uh, merge both Teams and chat together into one platform. We do have whole organiz uh, parts of our organization, especially the help desk, that leave, live in the Teams portion of Teams, which seems a little bit redundant. But I do send a company announcement to the whole, whole company uh, every Monday morning and just want to show you a little bit about how we do that and specifically one tip that I think can be powerful for you because I'm not sure that everybody in the company every Monday morning goes to the company announcement uh, theme uh, or channel to see what I'm saying, but I think they might be elsewhere. So when we create a new conversation in Teams or in chat, I am going to go to Compose Dialog and I'm going to, I'm going to be able to add the bolding and so on. So I am going to put a subject on this and let's say it's the May announce. And then I can copy my content in here again. I can I can bold this and, and I can do other things with it. Create the size, but this is the tip right here. Post in multiple channels. So what I'm going to do here is post it in multiple channels. Microsoft makes it a little more difficult and says, oh, now you need to select the channels. So I'm going to come over here and select the channels so that this post, which can be pretty substa substantial, will show up in multiple channels. And now I get the options and I say, OK, I want it to go to the sales team. So I am going to select that channel. And I want it to go to the service channel and I can select multiple channels and that post shows up in multiple teams, multiple channels. That's a tip or a trick that I use quite often. So moving right along, I do want to mention that. Again, we talk about intelligent information integration as opposed to intelligent information islands. I rail against islands of information. We have a system or a platform here called Office 365. I think the analogy is to your cell phone 
And that is, if you've got an Apple phone or an Android phone, you've got the uh, apps that you can add. You have an ecosystem right there on your phone. Very powerful to have it all right here. And it's the same thing with Office 365. Microsoft's created an ecosystem where you can go out to the App Store and find apps and all kinds of them. Uh, LinkedIn is integrated, StubHub is integrated. So Trello is integrated for project management. So you can, you can integrate into your platform for security purposes and for productivity purposes. So we always say when you're trying to improve parts of the organization, if you can look at the ERP system, the EHR system, the professional services system, your centralized system that runs your company. If I can find an app that integrates to that, that's perfect. But certainly if you can find an app that in integrates to Microsoft 365, that's very powerful. Now, I'm the individual that gets to a meeting one minute early or one minute late. I mean, I'm riding the rails there. I'm not the guy that shows up 15 to 30 minute, minutes early. But when you, look at Office 365 or a Teams meeting, news, news for everybody, and that is that if you're carrying your cell phone, and I'm a little bit old school, I carry the cell phone, but I don't always think of it, you can join the Teams meeting on your cell phone. So if you're running two minutes late for a meeting, you can jump on the Teams meeting and you can be on time for that meeting. So that's, that's, that's you know, the tip for me is if it's a Teams meeting, or a physical meeting or Teams meeting. I can jump on the Teams meeting and walk in the room two minutes late and guess what? I'm on time. So uh, Teams meetings, you can always be on time for them. Even if you're in your car scrambling, uh, you can fire it up on the mobile device, which is the power of Teams, right? So many devices, including conference rooms that it works with. So those are my tips and tricks. I hope they help you. Uh, I am Mike Ritzema with I3 Business Solutions. Questions, comments, uh, want more information, track us down. We're going to wrap this up. I3 Business Solutions, Mike Ritzema signing off. And have a good April.